Hi friends, you've made it to Carrie Tales Preschool. Thanks for stopping by. Guess what? Today we're going to talk about buttons. Buttons? That seems kind of funny, you might think. But buttons are quite fun. We have an activity, we have two songs, and we have two books to go with it. You'll see all the fun that we can have with buttons. Yes. So, let's get started. Here we go. Put your thumbs up. Look at me, look at me, I'm a Carrie Tells Kid. Look at me, can't you see, I'm a Carrie Tells Kid. And everywhere I go, I want the world to know, I'm a Carrie Tells Kid. I like my colors, I like my numbers, I like to sing my ABCs. I like my letters, I like my teachers, but most of all, I like me. Look at me, look at me, I'm a Carrie Tells Kid. Look at me, can't you see, I'm a Carrie Tells Kid. And everywhere I go, I want the world to know, I'm a Carrie Tells Kid. I'm a Carrie Tells Kid. Pete the Cat and his four groovy buttons. The art's done by James Dean. He's the creator of Pete the Cat. Now the story is by Eric Litwin. Take it away, Eric. Pete the Cat put on his favorite shirt with four big, colorful, round, groovy buttons. He loved his buttons so much, he sang this song. My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons, my buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. Oh no! One of the buttons popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Three! Four minus one equals three. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no! Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons. My buttons. Oh no! Another button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Two! Three minus one equals two. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no! Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. Oh no! Another button. Button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? One. Two minus one equals one. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My button, my button, my one groovy button, my button, my button, my one groovy button. Oh no! The last button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Zero! One minus one equals zero. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no! Buttons come and buttons go. Pete looked down at his buttonless shirt, and what do you think he saw? His, his belly, belly button. button! And he kept on singing his song. My button, my button, still have my belly button. My button, my button, still have my belly button. Guess it simply goes to show 
that stuff will come and stuff will go. But do we cry? Goodness, no. We keep on singing. Look at all these buttons. Wow. Yeah, lots of buttons. What kind of buttons do you have on your clothes? Let's learn a song about buttons. It starts like this. Let's sing a song of buttons, of buttons, of buttons. Let's sing a song of buttons that fasten our clothes. When you fasten something, that means you're putting it together. So you will take a button and you will either put it through a hole to fasten it and make it stay together, or you will push them together to make it stay together. That's called fastening. What kind of button do you have? The kind that goes through a little hole or the kind that you push together to make it fasten and stay? Let's try our song again. Let's sing a song of buttons, of buttons, of buttons. Let's sing a song of buttons that fasten our clothes. There are big ones and small ones with two holes and four holes. Let's sing a song of buttons that fasten our clothes. Button, button, who has some buttons? Do you? I do. Here are all my buttons. There are many colors and many shapes in this button jar. I see a orange flower and a red circle and a blue star. So many shapes and colors. But let's get started with just two colors and they're both going to be circles. A pattern is something that repeats. So let's repeat this pattern. Blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow. Do you see how we did that? We line them up every other one. That's a pattern. Let's see if we got the pattern right. Blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow. <gasps> Very good. Let's try with shapes this time. We have hearts and we have stars. We'll start with heart, star, heart, star, heart, star, like that. Heart, star, heart, star, heart. What comes next? Another heart? Oh no! We should put a star there. That's right. Good job. Heart, star, heart, star, heart, star. That's a pattern. You should try it at home. Corduroy by Don Freeman. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. Then, one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, look, Mommy, she said. Look, there's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much money already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight, I'll go see if I can find it. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, 
Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Suddenly, he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he had stepped onto an escalator and up he went. Could this be a mountain? He wondered. I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor, and there, before his eyes, was the most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. Oh, this must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And, he, and up he crawled into a large, thick mattress. All at once he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried, and he tried to pick it up. But like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. He yanked and he pulled with both paws until pop! Off came the button, and off the mattress corduroy toppled, bang, to the tall floor lamp. Over it fell with a crash. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going his rounds on the floor above. He heard the crash, and he came dashing down the escalator. Now, who in the world did that? he exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all. And there he <laughs> saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The night mount watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customers came into the store in the morning. And there, looking at him with a wide, warm smile, was the same little girl he'd seen only the day before. I'm Lisa she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night I counted what I've saved in my piggy bank, and my mother said I could bring you home. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. And she ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight into her own room. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers, and alongside a girl-sized bed stood a little bed just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like the enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. Oh, you must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa and gave him a big hug. Friends, I had so much fun with you today. I hope you like the stories, the songs, and our activity. I love you and miss you and would love for you to come back again and again. Go ahead and like the video and give it a thumbs up. Also, you can subscribe so that you can see all the Carrie Tells videos over and over if you'd like to. Share it with all your friends. That would make me so happy. Thanks again. See you next time.